This is June 8, 2018, and the Historical Awareness Committee, Lee Martell, Fred Mullen, and Donna Dunn are here with Nancy Godbout Ramsey at her home on Twist Hill. She grew up in this area, and she's going to tell us stories. And if you want to start out and tell us what you remember most as a child. What I remember most, well, my parents, I was born September 26, 1937, and they bought the farm here in, nine, uh, in September of uh, 1938. And my father was working for Rosmore Turkey Farm, and he decided to start a, a turkey farm, which they named Mary Roll Turkey Farm. And then, uh, I don't remember too much, but uh, uh, my folks lived on the land of the earth, the, the earth of the land. They uh, raised everything. They had pigs, they had uh, cows, which they used to sell the milk, and they had their own pork. And uh, the only thing my folks went out to buy was the sugar, uh, spices, and flour for baking. Now, where did you buy those items? Uh, Champagne's store in Manchester. In Manchester is did you where. ever shop at the Dunbarton Center store, or was that just too far? No, uh, they mostly went to Manchester because they gave them a reason to take a ride. Okay. To, and they would, uh, once a week, they'd go down and, and pick up what they needed. Do you remember what kind of car they had? It was a station, a wood, wooden station wagon. Woody. Yeah, Woody, yeah, yeah, and uh, um, that's what I can remember. And now, how many brothers and sisters, and where were you in the, the spectrum? I'm the oldest, and my brother, Ray, and then my sister, Rachel. We were just three of us, mm -hmm. and uh, um, it was, uh, I was always the boss. <laughs> <laughs> She were. <laughs> they always looked up to me. <laughs> now, did you? Uh, what did you? How games did you play around? And, and oh, chores. We, I, uh, our chores. Oh, we had chores. Believe me. Yeah, we all had to pitch in and uh, help. And uh, but my mother was the boss in the kitchen, and uh, she would never. We could sit and watch her make her pies, and uh, uh, she would pick when it was fruit season. She would make pies. She had a freezer just for her fruit pies, blueberry pies, raspberry pie, rhubarb pies, um, and uh, but I could watch, I could sit at the counter on a stool and watch her make her pie crust, and, but I was not allowed to, uh, uh, to work with her. When did she teach you how to cook? I learned by watching her. Oh. And, uh, uh, for cakes. Now, she was not a cake maker, but one day she developed a boil under her arm and she couldn't stir the batter. And that was the only time I could remember that she let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> How about your siblings? Were they in the kitchen with you too? No, no. No, no. just you. I was huh? just me. Yeah. Well, my sister was younger and my brother, of course, was always outside, you know, mm. or around somewhere. But I seem to be the only one interested in the cooking. Okay. Now, what kind of chores did each of you have? Uh, well, we had to help out. Uh, we helped my father, mm -hmm. and he taught us. That was my first lesson: was uh, learning to drive the tractor. Really? Yes. How old were you? Ah, uh, gosh, I. You know, I really don't know. I probably was like. 12 years old, something really? like that, you know. Was that unusual for a girl to drive a tractor back then? Probably, yeah, but that's, uh, it gave me a... <laughs> you liked it. I did, I did. I thought that was the greatest thing, sitting on the tractor and driving it, you know. And uh, uh, as I, um, now uh, I'm trying to think of, uh, oh yes, uh, when my father would feed the turkeys, uh, I would go with him and to feed the turkeys and that's how I learned to lift 100 pound bag of grain. My mother used to give him heck that girls shouldn't lift that heavy and I would, 
help him to feed the turkeys and, and we water. Started. We did everything really, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I learned to milk the cows, even though I didn't milk too often, only <laughs> once in a while. Uh, now, how many uh, cows did you have, for instance, versus how many turkeys? Okay, well, we had six to 8,000 turkeys, and for cows, well, enough cows that they sold the milk. Okay. Yeah, and uh, the, uh, and the cream, and the, um, in those days, when the, the cream used to come to the top of the milk, and that's the cream my mother used to use. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, we we ate, we had the best. Yeah. <laughs> Someone told us a story once about how the butter and was a different color, and the cream was a little richer in the summer when the cows were feeding on yeah. the grass. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. Did you make your own butter? And yes, I helped my mother make the butter, and I've got the the butter maker right here yeah. in the kitchen. And was it even more and I put flowers in, in it. And it was, was it more yellow in the summer? Yeah, oh, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, we used to have to pound that butter and put a little salt, and then we would pound it again. And there was. Did you have butter presses, or did you use a box and cut it up? Uh, a box a and box. cut it up. Yeah. yeah, and people used to come up from Manchester to buy the butter. But they did. Oh, and they she used to sell it a dollar a pound then, and that was that's mm -hmm. a lot of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Did she keep it in a freezer or a big refrigerator? Or? Well, she. I think she refrigerated it, yeah, because it was sold right away. People were always coming up either for turkeys or butter or... Did you then, sell turkeys year-round or just no, mostly Thanksgiving? No, just at uh, Thanksgiving. And then it, whatever, they have a few for Christmas. Okay. But people mostly would sell, you know, uh, buy at Thanksgiving. And uh, um, so that was busy time. We would start like two weeks ahead because my father had a special cooler for them. And uh, so he would start killing the turkeys. And then we had a lot of people around here, neighbors that would work to help pin feather the turkeys because he did not use a machine. Everything was hand picked. And, uh, uh, he had probably about five employees mm -hmm. to, uh, to help. What would you do with all those feathers? Oh, a New York company would come to buy the feathers. Mm -hmm. He had to separate the feathers. The long feathers, he had, a, he had ba a bag set up, two bags, for the fluffy ones, the fluffy short feathers, what went in one bag and the other long feathers went in another bag and, and of course these were all white hall and turkeys. Oh so yes, white all feathers. white. Right. Yeah. And they would come from New York and they used them to make costumes, feather costumes. I had no idea. Were there any other byproducts? Yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah, he did pretty well with that, you know. Recycle. See? We recycled everything. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about how the farm was set up, how many acres, the type of buildings, where everything was? Okay, uh, well the house had a shed and of course a barn, three-story barn, and uh, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven brooder houses, and uh, what else? Uh, where, how many incubators and where were oh, those? Oh, four incubators in the cellar, mm -hmm. down, yeah, and uh, he used to hatch his own turkeys, uh, little baby poults, and uh, even, um, what's his name, that lives in Bow, used to buy uh, my father's turkeys. Uh, Do set? He, he um, pies, he makes pies. Oh, I do. And he know. sells pies in the, um, he lives in Bow. I can't think of the... Uh, okay, didn't know uh, that connection. Uh, Lewis? Yes, Lois, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Lois Farm. Uh, oh, okay, yes, L-E-W-I-S, Lewis yeah, Farm, Lewis. okay. Well, I didn't know that, so he yeah. too, okay. Yeah, he didn't stop. My father was about the only one around here that would, mm -hmm. uh, you know, had incubators and... Uh, I think he was the biggest turkey farm in town. Yes, he was. I understand there was one on Gorham Pond Road. That wasn't... Blaisdell and something, I think. Yeah. And then there was a small one in the center of town. Yeah. But you were the big one. Oh yeah, my father was. He, was he sold commercially and uh, residentially. Okay. I remember I used to go with my father to deliver 
they used to order like two weeks ahead of time and when he come to deliver the turkeys I used to go with him and that's how I learned to make change I used to go he my father would send me to the door to bring the turkey and then I would have to make change and uh, I never forgot that <laughs> So that was, uh, those buildings were across the street, and then on, he had big fields with the turkeys yeah, on the Yeah, he range. had, the, I would say, a little over 10 acres up here. Okay. Yes. And, and then, then the rest of his acreage was with the farm. Now, you told me something about a trailer that he, he was... Yes, he had a trailer he used to bring up here when he had the, the turkeys, uh, when they were old enough uh, to roam around, and uh, he... Uh, if uh, he would stay in the trailer and and the turkeys and the, at night would let him know that if there was danger around and if there was my father used to go out and with a shotgun and take care of the bear take care or the, of the or whatever it was yes <laughs> did you ever lose any animals to predators mm, I don't remember that I don't think so the only turkey he lost was the dog. I uh, got the turkey once and mm -hmm. my father had to put him away <laughs> because mm -hmm. once they taste blood there's no stopping. Yeah, so uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so and then did you own bicycles? Did you? Oh yeah, I bicycle. Yeah. I didn't have a bicycle of my own, but mm -hmm. I did bicycle, and I used to. I had a friend that lived up the road. Ruthie, her name was. What was her last name? Uh, is it Wheeler? Wheeler. Okay, the Wheeler family. Yeah, yeah. Ruthie Wheeler up the road, and uh, and then of course uh, when I started, I only went to school five years here at Montalona. Mm -hmm. Then uh, my folks changed me to a. Uh, a school in uh, a private school in uh, in Manchester. Okay, so you went and here one through five. Yeah, one through five here, and then from six to eight in Manchester, okay. and then I went to high school at another private school, St. Joseph High School for Girls. Okay. Yeah. Tell us about how you got to school. Uh, Mr. Uh, Morissette would uh, pick us up. He was the bus driver because he had, he had a car full of his own. Mm -hmm. He had the triplets, then Pauline, which my age, and then of course, uh, I don't know, a couple of the boys. So he would pick me up to bring me to school at Montalona. He was one of the paid bus drivers in town who used their own vehicles. There were a number of them, I understand. Oh yeah, yes. I didn't know they got paid. They but, got paid, yeah. Oh, they got yeah. paid, they yeah. Got paid, yeah. Yeah. So, was. and how was that in the winter? How were the roads in the winter? And well, as long as they picked me up, I wasn't worried. <laughs> I wasn't driving. <laughs> were there any times that there was so much snow you couldn't go to school? That I don't remember. No, yeah. that I don't. It seems like we always went to school. Yeah. And it what, what was it like in a one-room schoolhouse? I was very shy. Very shy. I'll tell you, I. I remember the first day I was there and I'm looking and I says, oh my gosh, I says, I remember the potbelly stove in a corner to heat the one room and then Miss, Miss Ames was the teacher and she loved her piano and she taught us how to sing and, <laughs> and uh, we used to, uh, she used to put on a show and we used to sing at the uh, uh, the town hall on the second floor. Yeah. I know. Now was that Sarah or Sadie Ames, or was that one and the same? There were two Ames sisters that were teachers. Oh, Sarah. Yeah. Sounds like Sarah. Yeah, there was a Sarah. I've I, I heard oh. other people refer to Sadie Ames. Okay, I always miss Probably. Ames. You know, oh, Ames. I, okay. I don't know. Yeah, she ended up building a little house in the center of town. Oh, yeah. A, a little tiny one, and her sister built another one just beside each other, and that's where they lived out their days. And I was told, I found something that was written that said that when a year after the Montalona school finally closed, one year later, Sadie Ames passed away. Or said Miss Ames oh. passed away. But she loved that school and she loved teaching there. Oh, yes. And it she was. had flowers outside, I was told. She planted flowers. Yeah, we had the, the flagpole. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I remember that. And uh, yeah, she was a, a nice, a nice teacher. Now, did you have nice. an outhouse back then? Oh yes, oh yes, we had outhouse. I'm used to that because we had an outhouse on the farm. One for, hole, two holes, or three? No, we were fancy. We had two holes. Two holes. Oh okay. yes, we had to from the kitchen. We had to walk through the shed to the. <laughs> Oh God! Did you have toilet paper, or did you use a Sears and Roebuck catalog? No, we had toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> and that night, I used to be afraid to go out. <laughs> oh, there was uh, it was different. And then we really appreciated when they had the uh, a new bathroom put in. Oh boy, they had the the best ceramic tile, and uh, mm -hmm. was really nice. Yeah. We really appreciated that. <laughs> I'll bet you did. Now yeah. back to the school. Do you remember where they got the water for the classroom? Was there a well or was there... Did someone bring the water in? They didn't have running water there. They probably did and I didn't pay much attention to that. Yeah. Okay. They probably... Someone probably did. Yeah. And we go out at recess and play games and uh, Norma the Grinia was one, I remember her, and uh, um, we used to play games and she would help us, you know, and... Uh, now was it a wooded area or was it more field at the time? Field and wooded. Right. Did you yeah. have a big tree in the schoolyard? A lot of them had a big maple tree, a lot of the little schools. No, not really, mm -hmm. no. I don't remember a tree in, in front. There was right. just, I read the flagpole and there was a lot of trees in the back. Okay. Yeah. One day I decided maybe I should walk <laughs> during recess, walk in the back because it would come to our, our farm, you know, and uh, that was fun. It was just an idea. Yeah, yes. You know, you get crazy ideas when, you, uh, when you're when young. You're little and you want to explore. Because um, I've, walked to, I've walked home once in a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, after, after school. Did you ever get into any mischief at school? Oh, no, never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I, I wasn't that. I was so shy that. <laughs> no. Did the other students get into mischief? Oh, I'm sure they did. Any, I'm sure. Anything yeah. you remember? Not really. No, I, I don't remember. Mm -mm. Do you remember what happened to the school after it was no longer used as a school? Do you remember much about it? Not really. Okay. No, not really. We were told it was used as a Boy Scout camp for a while, and oh yeah, and then eventually it was gone. Oh okay. Okay. So they didn't move it somewhere. The, no. The well, they used parts of it to build a house down on County Road, like the maple floor, and okay. other parts of it to build yeah. a, a camp. And the the town supposedly has the clock, um, but the rest of it is gone. Yeah, Aww. that's too bad. And did you know that, or did you ever hear that that school was not always in that location? That before that, that school had been on Kimball Pond Road? That's what I heard. Okay. Yeah, that's what I heard. Okay. So. Um, okay. Um, let's get a little older. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, was, what was your first job or your first paying job? I mean, were you paid to make oh, change for first... the turkeys or? No, no, no. My father and mother never paid, no. And we didn't expect that. Uh, my first job was uh, uh, Notre Dame Hospital in, in the billing department. That was just a little part-time job after school because I was going to school at the, uh, St. John the Baptist and they had a, a school like for the 6th to the 8th grade on Rimmon Street. So I was, we were close to the uh, Notre Dame, so after school I'd go there and, and work. You now know. how did you get back and forth from home to school and work? Uh, the bus. The bus, that's right. That would, um, I think my father picked me up okay. uh, when I was working. Yeah. You know, I wasn't working full time, it was just a... Uh, now, did your brother and sister go to school in Manchester too at the same time, or was it just you that went my to school? My sister first? went to school, yes, at the same time, and my brother went to uh, school there, but uh, then I'm thinking of high school, so. Mm -hmm. uh, right. But uh, the finish the grammar school, we all went there. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you get older, did you pretty much stick to the east? side of Dunbarton or did you interact with the other parts of Dunbarton? 
the the uh, maybe the east side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole, east south. <laughs> we were told the only time that the town kids really got together was at graduation or in the parents at town meeting. Yeah. Other than yeah. that. Oh yeah, town meeting. Where did you go to church? Our church. Yes. Oh, Saint. Our church was St. Jean the Baptist on Kelly Street okay. on the west side. So you were really kind of clinging to yes. the Manchester Yes, after side once we started going in school there, yes. Right. How did yeah. you get to St. Jean? Oh, the bus used to come to Audette, Mr. Audette. Oh, my and my God. father would bring us to Mr. Audette every morning to get the bus. Okay. That was big. And the bus driver was Arthur Trayon. I never forgot that. Yeah. And you like taking that big bus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That was nice. And then uh, sometimes we just, uh, oh, and we'd walk home when the, the uh, school bus would bring us after school to Mr. Audet. We'd sometimes walk home. Yeah. Walking is good. It is good. <laughs> it is good. Yes. When you were really, really little as a child, did you play barefoot at all or did you always wear shoes? Oh, no. We, we, we uh, played the uh, barefoot. We were outside barefoot, and yeah. I just still find that it seems everybody in this end of town played barefoot. Oh yeah. And I just I don't get it. <laughs> and gardens and gardens. Mm -hmm. My father and well, my mother had three gardens. Uh huh. And that's one thing we did. We did a lot of weeding. pulling weedings, pull weeds. And how about canning? Oh, my mother did six to. 700 quarts she put up in the summer. She put up everything. She canned everything. Did you help? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I helped. Did yeah. you have fruit trees? Yeah. Yeah. What Peach trees, Peach tree. apple trees. Uh, of course, uh, for the berries, uh, it was uh, blueberries, wild blueberries and raspberries, black raspberries. Those are hard to find. Yes, black raspberries are yeah, hard to find. Yeah. I know one patch, and I'm not telling anybody where it is. Uh oh, uh, I've been dying. I've been looking for them, and oh. I can't find them. They're hard to come by. If I get enough, I'll share. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's... What did your brother and sister do for their first jobs? And my brother, my sister. For her first job, I think that was the only job was. Uh, Sylvania. Uh, Sylvania. Yeah. Yeah, because she retired from there. All right. Yeah, I think that was her first job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she didn't finish high school and she went right to Sylvania and because uh, she was going to St. Marie High School. Okay. Yeah, I went to St. Joseph High School. Now, did she end up, uh, you find yourself back here living in, in Dunbarton. Oh, did you yes. ever really that was leave? my dream. Did you ever really leave Dunbarton? Not really. No. I never leave. We left but Dunbarton, but for 40 years mm -hmm. we did, and I couldn't wait to come back yeah. because my folks had given us, uh, my sister, five acres. This is t a little over 10 acres, and we got the other five acres. Okay. Now, does your sister live here now, too? No. no. Uh, she lived here for like 35 years, and they built a house. And uh, her husband passed away, and uh, she stayed an extra one year, but she couldn't take care of the, uh, it. It's a lot of work. And so where does she live now? She lives in Raymond, New Hampshire. Raymond. Yeah, she okay. bought a condo mm -hmm. in Raymond, and now, she remarried. Well, she did. And how about your brother? My brother? Mm -hmm. Oh, he uh, he went to a uh, school the, to learn a trade, and he went into plumbing. And uh, he uh, started the uh, Rayco Plumbing on um, Route 3A. Mm -hmm. That was his business. And uh, then he started developing. Uh, he had bought a lot of land, and he started developing, building houses. But he never came back to Dunbarton. No, no, no. He never came back. No, no. He did live up. No, that was the son that lived upstairs because my folks had a little apartment upstairs mm -hmm. and uh, that was his son that stayed there. My sister stayed there for quite a few years before they built a house and uh, and he was very successful, my uh, my brother. Mm -hmm. I wish he was here today. He passed away at 66. Oh, yeah, that was our, my only brother. Yeah. That's awfully young. 
Yeah, he was a good guy. Yeah, everybody loved him. He was like my father. Do you ever, um, now that is no longer Turkey Farm and uh, a new person has purchased it, but do you ever, are there like old farming implements in the woods? What happened to the, um, what did you call those? Not poultry houses, but brooder houses. Brooder houses. What happened to those? I don't know what they did with them, but there's still, I think, three left. Oh, really? I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, okay. there's still three left. Oh, but I think they docked them down, the others. You mm -hmm. know, I guess the ones that were in bad repairs, they uh, just knocked it so down. So what year, what was the last year they sold turkeys? Do you remember? Okay, my father passed away in 1991. March the 9th, and uh, so that would have been probably two years prior. Oh, really? It's 91, right up into the 1980s. Uh, 90, probably 1989, wow. around in there, in the 1980s, you know. A, uh, did you ever buy any of her turkeys? Yes, we did every year. Did, yeah. We did? We did. Yeah. We lived right down the road here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we grew up just the other side of the border. We used to the what border? Dunbar and Gosling. Oh, yeah. oh my! So we were up here all the time. Yeah. We were up in this area all the time. Yeah. We eventually moved into town because we like it here. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We uh, we uh, we got married. We lived in Manchester for a while, and then we moved to Bedford, and that's all I kept dreaming of moving back. And my mm -hmm. husband told me. When he retires, then we can. So I waited for him, and when he was ready, he had retired. We sold our house in Bedford, which we lived there 38 years, and then he said, okay, he said, now this is the time to uh, talk about building the house on that. And you had always owned this land. Yeah. Oh, Yeah, we owned smart. this land for quite a few years. Okay. Yeah. And you kept it field, or did you have to clear it again? Uh, no, we kept it a field. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. All right. Um, now, tell me again, uh, when, again, this, you seem to have gravitated towards Manchester, but when you were young and you needed a doctor or a dentist or a medical care, where did you go? Where did I, did we, you know what? I don't, I, I don't think I ever went to a doctor <laughs> when I was young. <laughs> There were some doctors that traveled around and went to the houses. Do you remember? No, no, no. no. Well, we never had a doctor come so to the So you were house. healthy. I guess I was because uh, <laughs> I, <never. laughs> I don't remember. But I'll tell you one. Uh, I had to have my tonsils out. And uh, I would not go to the hospital uh, to have my tonsils out. My sister had to come with me. She didn't have to have her tonsils out, but she had her tonsils out because <laughs> To come with me to the uh, hospital in um, Grassmere. What was the name of that oh, hospital? Moore General. Moore General. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. I'll so never forget so that. Good. And after that, they used to use ether. Ether then? That smells you know, like yes. that. Oh. And I wasn't sick after, and my sister was so sick. <laughs> what did you do to her? <laughs> I don't know. I would not go. Isn't that funny now what your parents will do? <laughs> they wouldn't do that today was. No. Now, growing up, I'm going to get back there for a second because I forgot to ask, did you have central heat or how did you heat the house? And Steam heat. We had these big old-fashioned radiators. Uh, radiators, yeah. So you actually had central heat. Yeah, I guess we did. You were lucky because we then, a lot of the other families didn't. Yeah, and then they had a wood stove. I always had a wood stove in the kitchen. Is that and what she the, cooked on? Yes, wow. she cooked on that and then she had an electric stove okay. too. Yeah, on both. She cooked on both. Yeah, and she, uh, she was doing it. was so, yeah, that was, oh, the, those radiators, boy, did they send, mm -hmm. uh, that was good heat. Now, did you always have electricity? I'm trying to remember. As the far as I know, it they, come did. Out they had to, you know, okay. because of the turkeys okay. and the, yeah, we always had electricity. Phones? Always had phones. Phones, yeah, they had the old-fashioned phone. Mm -hmm. How you many know, were on, on your party line? How many? Yeah, that's right. I, there was a few. Uh, <laughs> you know, we pick up the phone. And, oh, sorry, hang up. <laughs> but we were never allowed. We weren't phone people. We weren't allowed. 
Your mother sounded very uh, busy and uh, capable. Did she make your clothes? Did you buy your clothes? She made some of our clothes. She oh did. yes. Mm -hmm. And then we go. She a consignment shop. Uh -huh. To pick up clothes. I remember that. Yeah. And uh, very frugal. Oh, very, very frugal. Yeah. And uh, when she bought something, yeah, because she when we made our first communion. She made our dresses, and uh, and she even knit uh, the uh, knee socks for us to keep our legs warm, or I should say leggings. Wow. Leggings, she would uh, uh, knit them. <laughs> so in the winter, did you go outside to play or just for chores? Did you go sliding, ice skating? Oh gosh, we, we had more fun on this hill. Uh, sliding, tobogganing, uh, skiing and uh, church groups, uh, Boy Scouts, the Cub Scouts used to come up here on Sunday and, and uh, uh, use the hill for uh, sliding. No one was afraid. Does the hill go right out into the road? Uh, the hill goes, yeah, but the, <laughs> they didn't go to the road. <laughs> they weren't allowed. Okay. <laughs> How do you stop? <laughs> yeah, I know. There was always someone down the it bottom was, of the hill yeah, yeah. so uh, it was uh how about holidays what were holidays like oh, do you have any special oh, always wonderful the uh, holidays um there was no tree there was nothing set up we had to go to when we went to bed we got up the next morning there was a tree all decorated and my mother used to make uh, she used to have a doll and make all the clothes for the doll and uh, we'd have uh, each a stocking at the end of our bed with fruits and nuts that was big fruits and nuts and uh, uh, sometimes my father used to go to the field to pick up a, cut down a tree and uh, sometimes it, it you know, my mother would decorate it so it didn't look too bad. <laughs> it was a Charlie Brown tree sometimes. <laughs> so, so this was an all surprised to you in the morning. Yeah, yeah. There was nothing before we went to bed. And after we got, when we got up in the morning, the tree was set up. Everything was decorated. Oh my gosh, they must have been exhausted. Yeah, and then she had a workshop. We weren't allowed to go in there. Mm -hmm. She closed the door, and we weren't. You know, we listened to our parents then. We, I wasn't a, <laughs> a mischief kid, <laughs> you know, and and none of us were. So she could do make all kinds of secret surprises in that yeah. room, and you wouldn't know it because yeah. you weren't poking yeah. around. But one night, I was older then. Uh, she kept all the gifts up in the attic, and I happened to sleep in that bedroom that night, and I could hear her going up the stairs and. You could hear the paper crinkling, you know, and I said, oh, that's when she keeps all the gifts. <laughs> that was so funny. Gosh. Did your family have a camera? You must have. My mother you... always had a camera in her hand. Okay. Always, yes. She loved to take pictures. And we got to a point, we would, we'd hide, we didn't want our pictures taken. <laughs> oh, she was funny. Yeah, yeah, she was a great lady. We I'll have found you. that not all houses had cameras. I didn't know that. No, <laughs> yeah, no, we, we found that out. That's yeah. why sometimes there are oh. so few pictures unless they were taken by a neighbor yeah. who had a camera. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. yes. I know it was a little luxury, but that's one thing. Have. They have to have a camera. <laughs> well, I know you have a stack of photos you're going to share with us, and I think that's absolutely yes, wonderful. We appreciate yeah. that. I worried so much about sharing. Where are those pictures? So I took this morning, I took all, I have boxes full, and I said, oh gosh, look, I've got these pictures, and I, I'm i glad that uh, I've got pictures for you, right. you know. Well, we'll be very it's, happy to take good care of them and bring them back to you, and you'll have a digital copy also. Boy, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to, is there anything, obviously, you loved growing up in Dunbarton. Love it. And wanted to come back. Can you kind yeah. of sum up Dunbarton for us as far as you? Oh, I like it because of the privacy. I love privacy. I love trees. Uh, I love, uh, we were married. For, like I said, 40 years before we could, I couldn't wait to come back to Dunbarton. 
I we lived in uh, Bedford for 38 years, and I hear a lot of people love to take rides up in Dunbarton, like Route 13. It says they always ask me, "Where do you live?" I said Dunbarton. Oh, we love Dunbarton, and I hope it stays that way. And I'm glad to be. It took 40 years, but I'm glad to be back. back. And that's why we're adding on an addition. At our age, you go through different phases in your life. And we love, this was our dream house. We had it built, but uh, we want to stay here. So with the addition, um, and we're selling our house to our daughter, and we're going to live in the, they call it the accessory unit. And uh, because we love Dunbarton so and much, and I can have my gardens, and we don't have to start all over again. And your 